beautiful people, welcome to my Pyrography 101, a true beginner's journey of the how-tos and the uh-ohs. So hopefully I can help you guys avoid the mistakes that I made. So let's dive on in. Sounds silly guys, but first things first, make sure you tape that tracing paper and stencil to your selected piece of wood. Once you start moving that around to trace it, believe me, not fun if it slides. So the first mistake that I personally made was pressing too hard on the stencil because a lot of the lines, I didn't want to burn definite lines. It's more shading and pulling away from those lines. So you cannot erase them once you have them pressed so hard with the carbon copy. So, okay, let's jump right into some of the shading. Now, again, you could see where some of my lines stand out from the carbon copy, but as I dive in here to the shading, I am using the ballpoint tip and I am going over it in layers and layers. Yes, I speeded this up a little bit for you guys so that you're not bored with watching the hours upon hours it took me to do this piece. It is not quick. However, it is very relaxing. It is very freeing mentally, and you are just gonna love it. So layering, I am moving my hand around in kind of a circular motion and going over top of each layer. My machine is set about a four, and that's pretty much where I've kept it for most of the time. Four to four and a half. So now I've switched up the tip to more of a pointed, kind of angled tip, and I can get really in there to the the edges of the triangles and kind of pull away. Now I'm layering over top of the shading that I just did with the ballpoint, and that is what it takes is to just go back there slowly. You don't want your heat too high. You don't want to press too hard. Those are two of the biggest mistakes most people make. So you can definitely tell when someone does that or when I have done that in this piece. It kind of indents the wood a little bit too hard. It makes too dark of a mark. So be gentle. Go in, layer these over top. You can change up the tips. You can try and, you know, play around with how the shading is going to work for you. So now that I've jumped into the feathers again, I've changed the tip up and I'm using um, more of a universal tip and I'm just very lightly with kind of a flick of a wrist pulling these pieces of the feather, you know, the lines through there, creating some depth creating some highlights. I'm gonna leave some white space in there. We don't want to just color it all in with a heavy color. You wanna go in and you wanna kind of make your lines and then go back over top of them and shade them a little, a little darker. Keep working towards that. Again, you're gonna notice my mistake. Look at the tracing on these feathers. I drew that center line right down there. Well, truthfully, I wanted that to be an empty space. So I cannot go back in now and get a true erased mark out of there. So what I ended up doing was kind of taking my shading into where that dark line is and making my white, creating my white space a little further over and kind of blending that line in with my shading in the end. But I just want you guys to see that this was a mistake that I made so that you guys can avoid it. Just remember not to press too hard when you're tracing if you're using a stencil. Now in future videos that I will do by hand um, and trace out you know, with a pencil so that they're easier to erase, but when using a stencil, just keep this in the back of your mind, okay? So now I'm kind of just leaning that tip sideways and kind of pulling away, pulling it away, going over and over to create that, that darkness. Now on some points of the wood, burns a little easier. I have to turn my machine down to closer to a three, three and a half. And on certain types of wood, certain points of the wood you may be using might burn a little harder. As you will see in my future videos, that if they burn harder, I have to turn the machine up maybe to five, five and a half, maybe even six. So be sure to just be conscious, play around with the different types of wood. You will learn once you really get in there and get creating, guys. This is fun. This is relaxing. It doesn't take you know, five minutes or even an hour. This piece took me several days, several hours 
probably actually about two weeks, I'm going to say, truthfully, of working a little bit at a time on it. But it is such a mental release. It is such a calming, wonderful um, effect on working creatively out of the right side of your brain, guys, just really takes you out of reality, so to speak, for a little while. So, okay, again, I'm whisking with the, the lines for the feathers and just creating those layers to create a little more of depth to it, a little more realistic um, look to it. So make sure that you play around. Don't get so hard on yourself that every little line you think can't be fixed because you can go in and you can shade over top. You can start to pull away. You can start to blend in to create different layers. And a lot of times you can fix maybe a, a little mistake that you think that you made in the beginning. Don't be so hard on yourself, guys. And as you will see in just a minute here as I pull away, that you will see the, the different feathers, the different effects that I've tried to do. If you look at the feathers on the left side compared to the ones on the right side, I'm trying to kind of change them up, get, play around with the different looks, make sure that they stand out enough from the background that they don't all just blend right in there. So going back and layering, um, just creating that empty space. Again, this is the universal tip that I am using. Play around with it, guys. Make sure that you have fun. This is my first piece, and to be quite frank, I was nervous about it. I was so afraid I was going to mess it up. I wasn't sure what I was doing. And you know what? There's no reason to be afraid of it. It is a silly piece of wood. It is a creation. It is whatever you want to make it into. And believe me, if you guys enjoy this or you're learning anything out of this, you can take the journey along with me from my first piece to my hundredth piece or whatever. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below, guys. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you get notified. This is my first video coming out. And I am going to be creating many more pieces that you will see, and I will be bringing them to you. Some might be shorter videos, some might be longer videos, some might be more in detail. Um, they are going to be my creations on all different types of things as I progress. Um, just a little hint, I want to move into burning some leather and some, some different things. So stick with me, guys. Subscribe to my channel, and you will get to see all of these new creations coming out. So, okay, back to this. Don't be afraid to move the wood around. You want your hand to be comfortable. You want to be at the right angle. And jumping into these beads, I am simply pulling. I am laying the burn tip a little bit sideways, and I'm kind of pulling away to create that definition, that roundness, that depth to it, with leaving a little highlights on the other side. And... When, once you kind of do that, you can go back in and you can make the, you know, a little bit of the harder lines to define what you really want to stand out. Don't plan on doing such hard lines to outline everything and then go in and color everything in solidly. That's not what this is about. This is about shading. You can do crisscross. You can do zigzags. You can pull it. You can do different techniques, polka dots, um, different techniques to really create the depth and um, definition that you really want to have. So again, I kind of go back and I make the lines around the leather strap a little more solid, um, creating some a little more definition and solid lines around certain parts of the beads just to kind of give them more of the round effect. Now moving this piece around with me, it looks upside down, but that is because I am trying to make it comfortable that I can come at it at the right angle. If you're stretching, if you're uncomfortable, guys, you are not going to get the right angles, which means you're not going to get the shading in the right places that you want. So move it around freely. Get comfortable with it. And play around. Play around with the different techniques. Like I said, the zigzags. Now here I'm pulling and I'm zigzagging back and forth. And jumping onto the nose, I've switched back to the more pointed tip. This has an angle to it. It allows me to get into tiny places and pull. And the first couple strokes, it leaves it a little liney looking. And that's okay because you're going to keep going over it. You're going to keep pulling over it to blend it in. So again, you're going to 
conveyed that all in, you're not going to see those lines that when you're the first few strokes that you take and you go, oh my God, I messed this up. Don't panic, guys. As you layer this, this blends in more. Now, I want it to stand out from the darkness and the depth of the nostrils, and I want it to be darker than some of the lighter highlights. So I'm kind of going over it slowly and blending slowly so that it has its own tone to it, its own definition. The light and the dark is all on how many times you go over it, what techniques you use, and you know how, how long you stay on that one particular process to burn. Now again, this is my first piece, and I hope that you guys really love it. I am very proud with the way that it came out. Um, really just working with textures and going over shading. If you guys would like to see any of my other pieces that I am coming out with and the mistakes that I've made and how I've learned through them, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be coming out with more and more videos. I hope that you guys really truly enjoyed this. I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't be afraid. Pyrography is just this new beautiful form of art. And I know that you are going to be so proud of your piece just like me. See you in the next video, guys.